Lifestyles of the Strange and Exotic Classic Book Review with my co-star Phil. This time I shall be reviewing <laughs> something that's probably beyond the comprehension of Michael Bay. It is the Star Trek Chronology History of the Future. And again, this is a 25th anniversary edition, I think. When was this? Most likely, because that's when all the cool books I got. That's when I had access to the cool books. I don't have bookstores around anymore. Sucks. Ooh, even earlier than that, 1993. So yeah, these are kind of old. Um, the Star Trek chronology. At last, here is the official illustrated timeline for Star Trek. From the founding of the Federation to James D. Kirk's early days in Starfleet Academy to the voyages of the Starship Enterprise under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. This book provides a comprehensive history of the incredible Star Trek universe. The Star Trek chronology documents every important event from every Star Trek episode and film, including both star dates and Earth calendar dates. The one must-have book for every Star Trek enthusiast, the Star Trek chronology has been exhaustively researched by Star Trek production staff members Michael and Denise Okuda, who did the encyclopedia, and includes little known inside information and trivia about the making of the hit television series and shows. Profusely illustrated with nearly 500 photos, many never before printed, this, <clears throat> this is the book that reunites both generations of the incredible Star Trek saga, an invaluable source book for fans and writers alike, which kind of paraphrases what they wrote on the back of the encyclopedia. And this is kind of neat because it kind of they kind of touch on to what the star dates are and how they work and how if you try to figure them out your brain will explode. Um, let's see. Is that in here? Let's see. I mean, of course, there's some things that they, they don't touch on where it goes filling in the blanks. Certain events, such as Earth's first contact with extraterrestrial life, and as of this writing, first contact hadn't been filmed yet, or the fates of the original series characters, again, generations, <clears throat> are obviously very important to the Star Trek universe, but have not yet been depicted in any episode or film. In the vast majority of cases, we resist the temptation to fill, these blanks, fill in these blanks because we did not want to step on the toes of future Star Trek writers. We wanted a document where the show has been, but not to limit, but not to limit the places where the future writers might go. And this actually starts 1.0, the distant past. Uh, okay. The indicated dates or ages in the items of this section are mostly conjectural. It is entirely possible that many individual events took place in a sequence considerably different from that shown here. These estimates could convey a sense of overall flow of history. Dates in this section are reckoned backward from the original Star Trek television series placed in 2266, meaning that something described as happening 500 years ago is approximately 200 years ago of our today time. Uh, we have included a few non-Trek data points in this and following section in order to lend some perspective as what was happening in real history. So the entries kind of go like this. 15 billion years ago, and that's with a B. The universe was formed in a massive explosion known as the Big Bang. In the aftermath of the explosion, matter and energy gradually condensed in the universe we know it today. And then it's like a little sidebar where it goes scientific theory. Which is kind of cool. And then it has 6 billion years ago. The Guardian of Forever was a time portal created billions of years ago. It remains functional until at least the 23rd century, and it may be the last surviving artifact of an incredibly ancient civilization, although its origin and purpose are still a mystery. Uh, and then it tells you what, um, why they put it in the six billion year mark there. Uh, the city on the edge of forever, the Guardian said it had been awaiting a question since before your sun burned hot in space and before your race was born, suggesting it's at least five billion years old, which is the estimated you know, 4.5 billion years is about the age of the Earth. 
Interestingly, ruins around surrounding the Guardian registered on Spock's tricorder as of being on the order of 10,000 centuries old, which is only one million years. One might speculate that the Guardian was not, in fact, a, you know, an artifact of that civilization, or the civilization, the civilization in question somehow spanned billions of years, perhaps with the Guardian itself. So that's kind of how the entries in this book are set up, which is really kind of neat. I like the little, you know, backdoor looks, you know. Uh, this actually has far more, you know, pictures than the encyclopedia did. But again, they're in black and white. There's nothing super amazingly visual about them. Uh, 1999, Voyager 6 spacecraft launched from Earth. This probe eventually fell into a black hole, emerging on the other side of the galaxy, where it encountered a planet of living machines that enchanted the craft and returned it to Earth in 2271. Uh, and there's an editor's note where it goes, The following production of the episode Q, Q Who for Star Trek Next Gen, Gene Roddenberry half-jokingly speculated that the planet encountered by Voyager might have been the Borg homeworld. But, unfortunately, there's only two Voyagers, and they were launched in 77, 78. Would have been neat if they launched more Voyagers, but... It would... I would think it'd be kind of redundant, because... Where else would you go that the first two Voyagers didn't already go to? I mean, you know... And then it was kind of... Oh, totally not sheer dumb luck, but after total calculation, how the planet's actually aligned in such a way where you could shoot off the Voyagers, so they made, you know, went down the list of the planets, <laughs> except Pluto, who did its own thing, but then that's not, it's not a planet, that's a whole other story. But, here's my question, though. They've only now recently kind of realized that there's a whole thing called the Kuiper Belt. Didn't the Voyagers have to kind of go through this thing? Is that how they discovered it? Did they not get to the Kuiper Belt yet? I thought it was at the Heliosphere. I don't know, but it's a really big place. Sorry, Phil. I'm confused. <laughs> Well, you are a stormtrooper, you used to that. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. But it just seems, you know, I would think if you launched a series of probes, if there's like Voyager 6, you would be doing the same type of thing you would do with the original Voyagers. So, Voyager 1 and 2 went to the gas giants and the moons and stuff like that, so you'd be sending 5 and 6 doing the same thing. I mean, they didn't name, you know, the probe around Saturn Voyager, it's the Cassini Huygens probe. Because it's a different mission, so I don't know. It just seems six Voyagers would seem kind of redundant. <laughs> Long story short. <laughs> now I wonder if Michael Bay has even touched this type of book. I mean, is he even familiar with any movie he makes? And good God, he's screwing with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles now. And they're calling it some other stupid thing, too. Like, mutant turtles, or, you know, ninja turtles, or... I don't know. I mean, at what point is he going to... <laughs> what movie is he going to make that's going to piss off the wrong crowd and just have him? <laughs> just pissed off the Star Trek bunch. Pissed off the Transformers bunch. I'm sure there's other movies that he made that were horrible. Now he's doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I mean, what's he going to do, G.I. Joe next, and we're going to just have the army blow him up? I mean, you know, just... <laughs> At what point are people going to realize, just make the man stop? <laughs> yeah, it's, our, it's our childhood he's screwing up. Come on. <sighs> so yes, pick up the book. <sighs> and it does give you a good sense of where things are placed, because the show is all over the place, basically, you know, the reference, especially the time-traveling things and all that stuff, where you go back to 1930, and, and then 1966, and that's just in TOS, and then, well. So, amazingly, the, the arrow of time still remains true. Oh, seems I'm running out of, out of memory. I only have a 4 gig here, anyway. Alright then, thank you for watching. Do comment, rate, subscribe, and suggest any other books. And I shall see you all next time.